okay if you want to make an adjustment. Okay, I'm okay with that. Because I, I don't want this to be too hard on you. The husband said, no, my wife and I, we've heard your teaching about faith. Mustard seed faith. We'll work through whatever. Whatever economy. Whatever people. Whatever customers. Whatever God will do it. We have so much trust in our faith in God that if God doesn't deliver, we will take we will fulfill our faith pledge by taking it out of our retirement. But you can't do that. You're so young. You take it out, you know, all the interest is going to hit you, and because and, right now it's protected, but, you know, you don't, you don't, if you take it out after you retire, then you get interest-free and all that. You can't do that. So that's how much we're trusting God. And let me tell you, when they did that, every month so far, they have been giving, they have been giving more than their faith pledge. And I asked him, I said, I need to give more to just in case something doesn't happen in, in, later on this year. No. Because God is blessing our businesses. God is coming through, just like you're talking about your house. God is blessing my business. Some of us, maybe our businesses are struggling. Maybe some of us, things are not going very fruitful. To me, wow, what, a, what an opportunity to be able to show God mustard seed faith to see what he will do as a result of our faith in him. Hallelujah. And the last point here is that mustard seed faith is troublesome. <laughs> mustard seed faith is troublesome. If you do some research, one of the nicknames of a mustard seed is troublesome seed. Why is that? Because it's troublesome to the farmer because it grows everywhere. You can't just keep it in, in, in one plot of land. It will grow. What, what, what it spreads and all, it goes everywhere. I'm just thinking, is that what mother see things should be too? It should grow everywhere. It should go all over the world. Hallelujah. It will go to a place that you, you can't go. That's what this does. You place something, and now you can't go to Africa, but these giant teams can. Hallelujah. They go everywhere. And why is it troublesome? Because it's troublesome to the devil. Wow. It's troublesome because Satan's mountains are being moved. We read that. It says if you have this kind of faith, he said, you can see this mountain. Be moved and it will be moved. See, the mountain of Satan gets moved. You think that's not bothering Satan? You think that's not making him angry? You think that's not troublesome to him? Let me tell you, he's been troubling to me. So many, so many years in my life, I want to get back at him, hallelujah. I want to have mountain, I want to have this mustard seed faith that will be able to move the mountain that he places in front of me. See, God doesn't want you to have this itty bitty faith. Let me tell you, you know why that's been preached? The enemy has made sure of that. The enemy has been telling you that it's okay to have little faith. Because the English Bible, he, he, what, what if he has, I want to say that maybe had a hand in that, in that translation time. Yeah, who is small. Mix up the other parable, put it in there. Then my church, but then the church, God's church, will think that that's all they need. And look how little they will do. Because they have in busy faith. Let me tell you, that's a lie. That's not in the Greek Bible. We don't have to receive it. The faith that Jesus wants you to have, big faith, hallelujah. He wants you to have massive faith that is troublesome to the devil. So let's make faith pledges that are troublesome to the devil. Let's make faith pledges that will move the mountain of unbelief in atheistic countries. Let's make faith pledges that will move the mountain of deception in Muslim countries. Let's make faith pledges that will move the mountain of materialism in Western countries. Hallelujah. In December, I had this senior lady coming to my church. And she was limping a little bit. Now it just happened that that Sunday, we had designated as a healing Sunday. We have healing services uh, regularly in our church. We're building up healing teams. We pray for the sick. And uh, for that one, a particular Sunday, she came. And no um, uh, members invited her. Uh, she had heard about our church from somebody else. She had attended a Mormon church before that. Before that was an Episcopal church. She was looking for God. She didn't find God in an Episcopal church. She didn't find God in a Mormon church. And Mormonism is really big in, in, in Hawaii. You know. okay? Of course, the biggest... Uh, Mormonism is, is the biggest in Salt Lake City, but Hawaii has a huge following. There's the Brigham Young University, there's a Mormon temple in Hawaii. If you've been to Hawaii, there's a very popular tourist site called the Polynesian Culture Center. That's all Mormon owned. Okay? There are a lot of Mormons in Hawaii. 
she went to Orphan Church. And then so what happened was that she um, she comes to our church, but she's still seeking God. She didn't find God in the Mormon church either. Came to me. And then and then I asked, does anybody have a backpack? And she didn't raise her hand, but some other people did. And I had them come up to the front, I sat them down, so you have seen me do this here at BC, I raised up the legs, and, and one leg was shorter than the other. And what we do in our meeting service, we have a, 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 a camera on the leg, and we'll project onto the big screen. Because I want everybody, especially every free believer, to see what is about to happen. I, I want them to think, well, I don't see anything, nothing's happening. They're just making it up. I, I want them. I want them to see it so they see it with their own eyes. Because there's a lot of Duncan Thomases up there. And so, so my brain, when the turtle leg rolls out, and, I mean, like within seconds. And, and, and so people say, wow, well, well, she saw two people. I want to do the right thing. I want to do the rest of my years in this church. 
Is that okay? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I also want to do the right thing and pay my tithe and give my offering. Mission, right? You said mission, yeah, mission, but other offerings too. Okay, but it's not mission. She says, you see the paintings on my wall? I said, yes. Each one is worth a minimum half a million dollars. They all be valued minimum half a million. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to start with the first one and sell it. And I know I'm going to get half a million. I want to tie on that half a million and they give me 20 to 40 percent. Is that good? Or that way, like half of it went to the church. Is that, is that too much for you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of on the little side. You know what I mean? <laughs> She has not found any greater peace since she got saved, and she has made that commitment to give to missions. And let me tell you, we had a conversation. She said the devil had troubled her life for too long. It, the devil really troubled her life when she was with the Mormon church, because they were all they cared about was her money. Now she was in trouble with the devil back. Missions is the way to do it. Hallelujah. She gets blessed. God kingdom gets blessed. The Calvary Assembly gets blessed too. Hallelujah. <laughs> this makes the difference right here. Jesus said, He wants you to have faith as a mustard seed. Not get this theology out of you because it's not biblical. Not some small amount and God can take and multiply it. If you give little, it goes little. It does little things. But if you pledge big, it will do big things for God. That's the kind of faith he wants you to have. That's what he says here in the Bible. What's your mountain this year? What's your mountain this year? You're struggling financially? You're struggling relationally? You're struggling physically with some sickness? What's your mountain this year? Make a mustard seed faith pledge that will be troublesome to that mountain. And watch God. Watch God take that faith of yours that's not small, but will bust and make a difference in the kingdom of God. Would you borrow your hands? Heavenly Father.